we're going to continue our unit 6 review by taking a look at how to multiply and divide radical expressions um, in the directions say to be sure to rationalize your denominators when necessary. So let's go ahead and take a look at question 7. Question 7 is going to involve simplifying and rationalizing. So let's have a look. Um, there are a lot of ways to get started on a problem like this. Uh, you could simplify the top and bottom separately. You could take a look at the fraction as a whole. You could jump straight to rationalizing. It doesn't matter which one you do first. As long as you've done all of those steps and um, have tried to simplify as much as possible, you should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and look at the fractions as a whole first because I feel like it's a little bit easier. So what I mean by that is I have the second root in the numerator, the square root of 3x squared, and I have the square root in the denominator of 5x cubed. Because I have a square root on top and bottom, I can actually combine those under one giant radical. So I can rewrite this so that both of those are under one giant square root. The 5 and the 6 on the outside will just stay 5 and 6 on the outside. When I'm looking at my radicals as one giant radical with the fraction inside, I can simplify that fraction if I have any common terms on top and bottom. So in the numerator I have x squared, in the denominator I have x cubed, those have x squared in common. So I can divide x squared by itself and get 1, I can divide x cubed by x squared and get x. That's as much as I can do to simplify this fraction, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite what I have now, 5 over 6. And the radical has 3 in the numerator, and it has 5x in the denominator. Now, because there's nothing else I can do to simplify that radical as a whole, I'm actually going to separate it back out into separate radicals again. So the square root of 3 in the numerator, and the square root of 5x in the denominator. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. So the 5 and the square root of 3 on top, and the 6 and the square root of 5x on bottom. Now that I've simplified my fraction as much as I can, I can take a look at the top and bottom separately and see if there's anything I can do to simplify those um, individually, but I can't do anything to take the square root of 3. I can't do anything to take the square root of 5x. There's nothing that can simplify between my 5 and my 6, so I'm all done looking at simplifying for right now, which means I would be finished if I didn't have this radical in my denominator. We are not allowed to have a square root in the bottom of a fraction. It's considered improper, and we have to fix that. So if I can't have a square root in the denominator, I'm going to have to remove it, and we remove a square root by squaring it. So if I want to remove the square root of 5x, I have to multiply it by itself, the square root of 5x. But if we're rationalizing the bottom of a denominator by multiplying it by the square root of 5x, I have to multiply the numerator by the same number so I don't change the proportion of my fraction. So we're going to multiply the top by the square root of 5x as well. When we do this, the denominator will no longer have a radical. What's going to happen on the denominator is this is the square root of 5x times itself. It is being squared, which means the square and the square root will cancel and the 5x will be the only thing left in that denominator. The 6 from before will also be there, 6, but we'll have that 5x outside of the radical. We just multiplied the square root by itself, the square root cancels, and the 5x is now free of the radical. In the numerator, I can't get rid of my radicals, but what I can do is com uh, combine them, because they're both square roots, so the square root of 3 and the square root of 5x I can combine those under one radical, it's the square root of 3 times 5x. All I have to do is one last round of simplifying and this problem is done. So one of the things I see is that I can actually multiply together 3 and 5. So I can do that math. And there's nothing I can do to take the square root of this number because 3 is prime, 5 is prime, and x is just by itself, there's no doubles in there, so the square root of 5x would be left. The other thing I can do to simplify is notice that I have a 5 on top and on bottom that can cancel. So all I'm left with now is the square root of 15x on top and the 6 and x in my denominator. Now to be very nitpicky, I have just done the second root, an even root, and this x is an odd exponent, so I should put an absolute value right there. And that problem's finished. Let's go ahead and take a look at a multiplication problem. 
Multiplication doesn't involve rationalizing because we don't have any radicals in the denominator. We're not dividing by radicals. So in this problem, all I have to do is see what I can do to simplify. And in this case, I have two cube roots that have the same index, the cube root there, the cube root there. So I can go ahead and combine those under one giant radical. That's going to be the cube root of 3 times 9. And then I can actually multiply those together to get the number 27, which is a perfect cube. Or at this point, I could start pulling apart my factors and look for triples, and I have three threes right there. Which means that the cube root of 27, or the cube root of 3 times 9, is just 3. That's it for that question. Let's try this next guy. Okay, we have division of radicals again. This could involve rationalizing. So if you wanted to, you could rationalize by um, multiplying the top and bottom by that fourth root of x to the fourth. Um, just kidding. If we have a fourth root, that rationalizing would actually happen differently. So don't worry about rationalizing anything other than the square root. But we do have to deal with the fact that we have a fraction here and we have a radical in the bottom. So we have to get rid of that one way or the other. So there are a lot of ways to do this. One of them is to simplify the top and bottom separately. You may notice right now how the bottom can simplify. The other way is, again, because I have the fourth root here, I can combine these under one giant fourth root radical like this and simplify that fraction, which I think is actually the easiest way to go about this problem. So if we do that, we end up with x to the tenth on top and x to the fourth on bottom. So we've got ten x's on top, four on bottom. They have four x's in common. So if I divide ten, uh, x to the tenth by x to the fourth, I have six x's remaining. And in the denominator, x to the fourth divided by itself is just one. So this has actually become the fourth root of x to the sixth. And the denominator simplified, and we don't have to worry about rationalizing anymore. Now, we do have to continue simplifying this radical, though. And the way we should do that is by, um, I would like to use the division process. I have six x's inside my radical. I need four in order to bring anything out of my radical. So the number I write on top, four goes into six one time. That tells me that one x can come out of my radical. And then the remainder, 4 times 1 is just 4, which would give me a remainder of 2. That tells me that 2 x's are stuck inside my radical. And that's just about it. Again, I did just take an even root, and the x I brought out is an odd exponent. I should throw an absolute value sign on there, and that guy is finished. Got just a couple more in this section. Let's go ahead and try this guy. This is actually delving into our um, notes from 6.4 using our exponent rules, but we are still technically multiplying um, radical expressions, so I threw it in this section as well. 6.4 is kind of sprinkled throughout this entire review packet. So in this case, what we have going on here is um, like bases, 2, one of them is to the 1 half power, one's to the 1 fourth power, and if I multiply like bases, I have to add those exponents. So it's 2 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth power. But this math isn't easy to do just in our heads necessarily because 1 half and 1 fourth don't have common denominators. So we're going to have to make that happen. We can turn the denominator 2 into a 4 by multiplying it by 2. And if I do that to the bottom, I have to do that to the top. That means that we actually have 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4 and if we add those numerators, we end up with uh, an exponent of 3 fourths. So that is the exponent of this original 2 that we had. So we have 2 to the 3 fourths power. And now it's a good idea to see if that can simplify. We should always put it back in radical form and see if it can simplify. So to see if it can simplify, what we're going to do is rewrite that as a radical. 2 to the 3 fourths. The 3 is our exponent. It's the numerator of our fraction. So 2 should be raised to the third power. The 4 is the denominator, so that's the root. It's lower, so we're going to root to that number. So this is the fourth root of 2 cubed. Um, inside this radical, I have 2 times 2 times 2. I don't have 4 of anything, which means that I can't take anything out of this radical, and we're just going to end up with the fourth root of 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And that's it. Let's take a look at our last example here. In this case, again, this is some um, this is some 6.4 rules, so let's go ahead and take a look at applying them to divide these two things. What I have going on here, 2 to the third power, 
over 27, that whole thing's being raised to the one-third exponent. Using the rules from 6.4, I know I can take this exponent and distribute it to both numbers inside this radical. So I actually have 2 cubed to the one-third power over 27 to the one-third power. Now 2 cubed to the one-third power, that's an exponent being raised to another exponent. I can actually just multiply those exponents. That gives me 2 to the 3 over 3 power, which is just 2, which is awesome. The denominator, 27 to the one-third power, I can rewrite that as a radical. The one-third power, that's the first power in the numerator, that's an exponent, 27 to the first power. And the denominator 3, that's a root, that's our index, so that's the cube root. So all I have to do is find the cube root of 27. That should be one you have memorized. 27 is 3 cubed. You should know your first 5 perfect cubes. But if you wanted to break it up into pieces, it's 3 and 9. 9 is 3 and 3. And there are my 3 3's right there. So it's actually just over 3. And that would be my final answer for that problem. We're going to continue with um, adding and subtracting radical expressions in the next video.